So I'm going to be talking about the secret life of Maven Central. So hands up here, who uses Maven Central? A few of you, yeah, okay, cool. So if you use Java and you use open source libraries, you'll generally use Maven Central. Um, I will introduce myself, just if anyone else has come in. Um, my name is Jamie Lee Coleman. I'm a developer advocate at Sonatype, formerly IBM. Uh, I used to work on Java, JVMs, runtimes, things like that. Um, and then I started off, actually, my career in mainframes, which was um, a big learning curve when I finished university. So, secret life of Maven Central. It starts with all of you, because you are the users of Maven Central. Um, at some point, we'll always find ourselves, if we're using Java, well, we need to download a dependency. We don't want to rewrite everything ourselves. So we could go, OK, we'll go to Google. Google might take us to Maven Central, and then we go and try and have a look. Um, I know the Maven search used to be a bit more complicated, but that's changed. So now we go and add our dependency. So you're probably all aware of this. We'll go and get this. You can use this in Gradle or Maven, and then we'll pull down our dependency. So um, whatever, there's lots of different languages that we have dependencies for on Maven Central. Um, so it's whatever you, you're using in your build system. But like I mentioned in the previous talk, if you were here, 90%, uh, 80 to 90% of all the code we use is now coming from open source libraries. Um, as you can see, Maven, there's a lot of Maven POM files on GitHub. This is what this is. So there's a lot of them around. Um, and our applications pretty much live or die with dependency management and these repositories. Um, so you're probably all familiar with this, you know, you download a dependency, blah, 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 lots of green, green coming down, it has to download this, that, and the other from Maven Central. Um, but it's kind of just there, right? I mean, as far as, it, as long as my career has been going along for 12 years, um, it's just been there. It's just, I've always used it, not thought too much about it. Guess what? I didn't even know Sonatype ran Maven Central until I started working there. So that was pretty cool. Um, a little bit of an outline of what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about what Maven Central is, um, why we need to evolve it, because it's pretty much been the same for quite a long time. I've got a little bit of homework for you all, um, which should be cool. If you've got any design flair, that'd be awesome. And then at the end, hopefully, some question and answers. Um, so Maven Central at org, like I said, it seems to have been with us for quite a long time. Um, I couldn't quite get it with the image, but this is what it used to look like. So maven.org, 1999 style. Um, it was created quite a while ago. And one of the co-founders, Brian Fox, who is my boss's boss's boss, technically, um, he, his, he was basically one of the cre creators of Maven, um, him and Jason. So Brian started off essentially when Maven was created, going around to different companies, trying to teach them how to use the build tool. Then he thought, OK, do you know what we need? A repository to store all this lovely open source code we're downloading. Um, so in 2005, this is when the Apache, Apache Maven project moved over, uh, moved home while Maven Central stayed, and this was still funded by public domain. But then it kind of outgrew that. Um, so now it's funded by Sonatype. And it has been for quite a long time. As you can imagine, we don't make any money off Maven Central. It's just something we do for the community. It costs us millions and millions um, a year. It's running on AWS, that's why. <laughs> um, but this is made, yeah, it's now funded by Sonatype. Why? Well, like I said, we like to give back to the community as much as we can. And this is just one of the things we do for that. Um, but it kind of outgrew its origins. It got a bit clunky. Um, it was basically sitting on a computer underneath Brian's desk for a, a year or so before we then realize it's probably best it moves somewhere else. So then it kind of ended up in the cloud. Um, what's running behind it? So if you've ever used Nexus repository before, this is also running here. Um, so essentially, a publisher will publish it to Nexus repository. Fastly, um, Fastly will uh, basically give you the bucket to download it. And then we have some search capabilities. So it's all running on the cloud these days. Um, and a plus, of course, there's no. No good um, system without a good API behind it, so there's an API. But to give you some crazy numbers of Maven Central, um, this is by the, so this is statistics from uh, last year. So there's 8.8 .8 million component versions on Maven Central. That's 27 terabytes of data. Um, and there's 79,000 uh, different organizations, namespaces, and publishers. So it's quite a lot. Um, and it's not slowing down, it is growing. Um, so in 2021, developers around the world uh, made more than 496 billion requests from Maven Central. 
So as you can imagine, serving all those requests can cost, cost quite a lot of money. Um, and demand does continue to increase as we go from month to month. Um, you can see the last month, we all get a bit lazy around Christmas time, but yeah, as you can see, it's gradually going up every, every time. And it's not just Java that this is happening. Um, open source is being consumed at massive rates these days. Um, so Java, you can see these are new projects. So there's new Java projects coming, new JavaScript projects coming, Python and .NET. So it's not slowing down. Uh, our love for open source is only getting larger and larger. Um, so in the end, running a service like Maven Central is very, very expensive. But it's kind of the root of our business, really. So in a type, again, my boss, he was the, one of the founders of Maven. So it's kind of at the heart of what we do. Um, there's one more thing that does cost, though. Um, you'll notice some of the slides are from the previous presentation, but that is keeping our applications safe. Like I said, um, hackers, bad actors are trying everything they can these days to um, attack us, so we have to adapt and be smarter than them. Maven Central does have multiple layers of protection. Um, the first is easy. You have to prove it's your domain name, so something like org, dot, Apache, dot, something like that. Um, so proof of domain ownership, it helps reduce the malware ending up in the repository. We at Sonatype do not remove stuff from Maven Central if it's got a vulnerability in it. That is not our job. We do not want to be saying what update or what new version can go on Maven Central or not because that is not fair on the publishers. That is not fair on the consumers because there may be a vulnerability in a part of the dependency which a user is not using. So for, it's not in our case to say yes or no. Um, but these are different ways they are trying to do this. So dependency confusion. A lot, some of you, not all of you, will be downloading latest. Avoid doing that, please. Latest is not good. Because if you do download latest, you may end up with this version, which a hacker has put in, and you're going to automatically pull that down with your vulnerability. Um, you've also got typo squatting. As you can see here, it's log J4 rather than log for J. Um, typo squatting is basically when us as developers might make a spelling mistake. Um, and that's when we accidentally pull down the wrong dependency, like here and here. As you can see, Apache spelled wrong. And that would mean then we introduce a vulnerability into our system. So do be careful when you're specifying your dependencies, you're pulling the right one and typing it in the right way. Um, so the first two, Maven Central has defeated those. We don't generally have those problems. Um, but this first one, we because the domain there's a new domain. We cannot shepherd pe new people making new domains. Well, we can, but yeah. So this one, would st you would still eventually get this downloaded. Whereas this, we will stop these because you need to be the owner of that domain. And um, for this one, yeah, we would say that's wrong. Now, there are different languages like Node which don't do this, uh, and Python. So do be careful because they do not have this in their open source um, repositories. So everything else is hard. Um, does the new package contain vulnerabilities when we download it? How do we figure that out? Um, how do we stop the code being published? Does the new package contain active malware? Um, and again, that's probably one of the only things Sonatype do take a stance on, which is if we know there's malware in there, that's it. It doesn't get uploaded. Um, and how do we figure all this out? How do we stop this bad code from essentially being published? So for Maven Central, Sonatype scans everything uploaded with its commercial scanners. We have an amazing research team. And honestly, if you, if you ever get a chance to look at one of their talks of how they do things, um, it's quite amazing how they find vulnerabilities in these things. But like I mentioned, malware, once we detect it, is the only thing um, we reject. But for Maven Central, um, finding out about vulnerabilities before you select a version is pretty straightforward. We have. Um, we have a tool called Bomb Doctor, which is integrated with Maven Central, and we also do scoring on Maven Central. Um, the scoring takes into a lot of different considerations, so uh, not only vulnerabilities, but it's how, what is the security posture of that um, dependency and that organization? How often is it updated? When a vulnerability comes out, how, oft, how quickly do they fix that vulnerability? So all these things go into kind of our scoring of the different libraries. But unfortunately, as developers, we're pretty slow to change. So who was aware of the log4j vulnerability that happened um, it was about a year, just over a year ago now? Quite a few of you. Yeah, guess what? We're still downloading that 
stupid version. Today, 33% of developers are still downloading that version with that vulnerability in. This vulnerability, which took one of the biggest Java vulnerabilities in the world, took down a lot of corporations, but yet 33% of developers are still downloading that vulnerable version. Um, oh no, so that was in May. Uh, so no, not 33, sorry, we got a bit better. It's 29% now. Um, can you see how many, 157 million times that vulnerable version has been downloaded. So we need to get very, we need to get better as developers as stop doing this and making sure we're pu not pulling in vulnerable, vulnerable versions. And so this was a graph, oh, it's quite small, but the yellow line, for example, shows when, when it becomes a problem, that's when we deal with it. So the yellow graph, I think, was Taiwan. And Taiwan was getting hacked by China quite a lot because of the vulnerability in Log4J. And now they don't download it anymore because they got hit and they realized, OK, this is why. So we're going to stop doing this. Um, but the problem is with humans, we are a reactive race rather than a proactive race. We deal with the problem when it's a problem rather than dealing, tending to deal with it before it's a problem. So um, do check to make sure you're not downloading any vulnerable uh, Log4J for but like I said, the bad guys have adapted. Um, they're not the same as they were before. Cyber attacks have changed. Um, cyber attacks used to be about money, trying to make money, whereas now you'll find that governments are hacking people. Um, it's now about sabotage. So they could be attacking your critical infrastructure. They could be attacking your manufacturing facilities, your food supply chains. Um, and they're doing this basically to try and cripple different countries. And they're being clever. They can put a vulnerability in and not even exploit it for six months. And then when you're doing something important in your country, it could be like a festival or something like that. Boom, they hit the button, it shuts down your infrastructure. So hackers have changed. Um, so we need to change as well. And yeah, like I mentioned, they, they might wait a long time. You know, They could hack your supply chain. So when you're when factories are delivering to lots of different shops, etc., next thing you know, um, they could have hacked into that delivery service and all your deliveries end up going to the wrong places and guess what, we don't have any food on our shelves. So yeah, they are getting very clever. Um, the field of battle has changed. Uh, like I mentioned, there's typo squatting and dependency confusion, but there's also vulnerability exploitation, vulnerability research. Um, they're now compromising our build systems. How many people use open source build systems or a free open source build tool at any point in your development? They can hack those as well now. So not only are uh, they ha trying to hack our open source libraries, but they could be hacking the tools that we're using to build our applications. Because um, if it's open source, then it's open for anyone to put a vulnerability in. Um, so yeah, we do have to be very, very careful. Now Maven Central is evolving to try and stop this or to try and help you all deal with these problems. Um, they, like I mentioned, they're trying to get into every different part of our supply chain nowadays. So Maven Central has finally gone and rebranded itself a little bit. Um, you probably all remember what Maven Central used to look like. So after 12 years, we thought we'd finally um, give it a little update. So there's a sign-in functionality, the search functionality's got a lot better. And like I said, it has um, different APIs for you to be able to use. So it has SBOM support across across the life cycle. Um, the Wi-Fi here is absolutely terrible. So I'm going to try and give you a demo about um, a wicked tool called Bomb Doctor, which is free to use. But we will see um, if my Wi-Fi is back on. Um, it has SIG store support. Um, also, we try and use best uh, cross-industry best practices. Sonotype is involved in the Open Source Security Foundation and lots of other places. And of course, we have um, enhanced developer intelligence. So essentially, yeah, looking at uh, what the application does, scanning it, making sure we're, uh, we're doing things in the right way. So like I mentioned, um, having things like this, which will allow you to see how many critical vulnerabilities, how many high, how many medium, are these going to be a problem? Am I using that issue? Because we'll download, for example, a Spring Boot dependency. And that will include another 10 dependencies. And those dependencies might include another 10 dependencies. So trying to manage the security of all these can get very confusing. But that's where the different tools come into play to help us do that. Um, so yep, like I mentioned, uh, we've got different tools we can use to assess the quality. So Cloud Monitor is one. Um, and hopefully, like I said, I'll try and show you Bomb Doctor if the internet is working. 
Um, but we take into things into a lot of consideration, so we'll scan each version and try and figure out what is the best version, because the latest version is not always the best version. Um, do bear in mind, though, you can have breaking changes when you move around. Um, so, yeah. Right, let me try and click on this and see if this works. Oh, of course it doesn't. Bear with me one moment, and let's see if I can get this loaded. If not... It doesn't look like we will have a demo here today. Come on. Uh, while this is connecting, are you all enjoying the conference so far? Yeah? I hope so. <laughs> Come on. OK. Well, I'm going to declare this probably not going to work, so I'm going to leave this here. Um, but what Bomb Doctor does is essentially you provide it with an SBOM, a software bill of materials, which you can produce quite easily. And what that will do is it will look through all the dependencies in your application. It will look through all the dependencies they also use, and then it will give you a score. So it will give your application a score out of, I think it's 500. 500 being the best, and obviously 0 being the worst. And what you want to try and do is increase that score where possible. It will also give you update options. So it'll say, okay, you're using Spring Boot. Um, inside Spring, uh, you're using this dependency. There's a better version for this. Um, so why don't you use that? Because it has less vulnerabilities. It won't go and say, move to this version if it's got breaking changes. It might suggest it, but it'll say, look, you might have to make some changes to your application. Um, but it, it, it's, really, it's basically gamification of this problem, which is really, really cool. And it allows you to visualize. So it has it on this big graph, and it has all the links of where all the dependencies and how they talk to each other. Um, if you do want to check it out, and if you do have internet, it's bombdoctor.sonotype.com. Um, but unfortunately, I cannot get the internet working. Let me try one more thing. All right, I think I'm going to give up on the internet. All right, sorry, everybody. I don't think I can get you a demo. Um, like I mentioned, there are rules for upgrading. You don't always want to be on the latest version because that's just come out and could have vulnerabilities. Um, so don't choose an alpha or beta version generally. Um, don't update to a, a vulnerable version, obviously. Um, you can update to a lower risk version, so you don't always have to be at the highest level version. Sometimes it's better to be on a version that you know could be six months old, because then all the vulnerabilities might be found if there are any, and that version, you know, you might be able to pick up a version just after that that might have um, less vulnerabilities. Um, if, has anyone? Oh well, do check out this. This is a report um, we do every year, and it kind of looks at the kind of the state of the supply chain, um, the software supply chain. It goes through loads and loads of different things. Um, talks about kind of how much open source code we're using, how many vulnerabilities are around, how much, how many vulnerabilities we're downloading, um, and we compile it once a year. And of course, because we are the chaperones and the Basically, the stewards of Maven Central, we have a lot of data, a lot of data to back all this up. We can see who's downloading what, how much people are downloading, what versions are vulnerable. Um, so do check out our software supply chain, because it takes a lot of this data and puts it into a nice, easy place to get started with. Um, one last thing, because I don't have the demo to show you. Um, we need a logo for Maven Central. As you can see, we have a logo for Maven. Um, we have a Sonatype logo, but we don't actually have a logo for Maven Central. Now, on the back of this, this was supposed to be... We were thinking of having this as our Maven Central logo, but being an open source repository, we want to get everyone else's opinions, um, and we want everyone else to contribute. So if you have any great ideas for what you think a really good logo would be for Maven Central, please do either tweet me, tweet Sonatype, um, and yeah, we'll take it into consideration because the Maven Central logo has been pretty bland for a long time, you know, just a few lines. So we want to create something new. And like I said, being open source, we want everyone uh, to participate. Um, so, like I said, reach out to me. You can either tweet me uh, or tweet um, or tweet Sonatype or tweet uh, message me on LinkedIn. Um, if you want to sign up, you don't need to sign up for beta access. The Maven Central portal is now completely out. So if you go to Maven Central, it should divert you to the new portal. Um, you can go back if you really want the old one. It's entirely up to you.
I think with that, uh, we are done. Thank you for having me here. It's been an absolute pleasure to come to India. Uh, and it's been an amazing conference. Thank you all.